If you feel like your laners are inting every single game, if you are struggling to jungle diff the enemy jungler every single game, you know, because you look like the Viega who just powered up and died, or you look like this Rengar who invaded and died. But that's okay, I have the solution so your laners int less, you will consistently be ahead of the enemy jungler and thus you will win more. It just takes a certain understanding of certain phases of the game and understanding what your role is every single game. Now to start off we have this challenger example and I've posted a little bit about this on Twitter but I wanted to explain fully why this happened to the Viego and why the great things happened to the Balvet. Both junglers will start on their red buff and it's very important that you have a look to see what's happening level 1. For example if we look here we see that the Poppy and the Shen go trading and the Shen is forced to flash. However, this does mean the Poppy is a bit HP compromised and most likely the Balveth is starting on the bottom side if Shen was in that position. And so you need to keep an eye on the Poppy who should not face check the tri bush, but she will anyway. They will go for trades, she will not trade correctly and she will lose a hell of a lot of HP before even level 2. Now as Viega, you were probably thinking, hey listen, Balveth is going to start on the red buff on the bottom side, sequence up. I can do a Red Krugs Raptors and then gank top lane ahead of her. And while you have heard me say that is a noble cause and a good one, I have to let you know that you can get the jungle video courses on Vukai.gg for a 95% discount with the new membership program, get access to the courses you need to achieve your goals by the end of Split 1 and for all of Split 2. Not only that, I am also including a private Discord with this so that you can come and join me, get access to free coaching, free champion for graphics, weekly lectures and Q&As, as well as a free video every week only released within the Vukai.gg jungle club discord if you want to buy the courses standalone you of course can still do that along with a free jungle improvement pdf the video courses plus full access to the discord rokaido gg is even more a jungler's loading paradise click the link below to climb faster than war chasing a 1 hp jinx across the map because if you look at the lane state here you see he goes and wards to track the Belfath, even though we know she's kind of coming up to the top side but you have to ask yourself, is the lane still gankable or should I still do this? The Poppy compromised herself entirely. She lost her TP. It is absolutely massive. Now we know the Shen has no flash. So we can in fact still go in for this gank. That's okay. But honestly, I would kind of pull the plug on the whole thing because she compromised herself. And you know that if Belvest shows up for the dive here, it is still a Poppy. She will still be able to get level 2 by the time Belvest shows up. And you could be looking to make plays in other lanes. Do something about bottom lane. Do something about mid lane. But if you're dead set on helping the Poppy even a little bit, you're forcing her to lose a shit ton of experience underneath her turret to go for this kill threat. Once it's very clear that you're not going to get it and his taunt is down, and you saw the Belvest walk across the wall to the top side, you have to back off. The Shen will have to go back to base. You've got a mini wave gap for you to actually retreat safely without tanking too much damage. You know the Belveth will have her blue and Grom still available. She has a top scuttle still available. You can go back to base, head straight to the bottom side, control that scuttle, control your blue side, gank the bottom lane. The absolute worst thing you can do here is actually see this gank through by going underneath the turret, taking all of that damage, dying, and knowing the Belveth is rotating because I just don't get it. You absolutely screwed this lane entirely. When she traded with Shen about the flash, she now has to leash for you, which compromises her even further. Yeah, she probably shouldn't have face checked the tribe bush, but that means now I'm just not going to show for you again. Fat wave, level 1, level 3, it's noble to go and help her out, but again, look at her, she's taking all of that mini damage, losing all of that experience to chase down a kill when the Belveth is right there. And now she's compromised from the leash, she's compromised from that death, and basically the Shen will be level 6 when she's level 4, and it will be no contest. Now the downside is here, you compromise yourself by quite a large amount. We come out of base here, yeah, we kind of do the blue, the crab, and gank the mid lane, Get a nice kill, that's amazing. The victor was clenching really hard for that flash, but still, he dies. Now, you know the Belveth would have finished that, done all the topside stuff, gone back to base, have a new quiver now. So when you fall back to your jungle camps, you know it's possible she might invade you. That's why what you want to do is grump into wolves and drag it just in case of this. And if you have a ward in your pocket, place it. If you have a control ward, place it defensively. What you don't want to do is move towards where she might come because you have no bottom lane prior. He doesn't, he dies. What does the Belveth do? Fall back. Go across the mid lane, knows now he's guaranteed to be on the top side, Raptors Krugs, and invades him there as well. Pushes him off camps. This is exactly what the Belveth is meant to do. And that brings us to the next point. You don't cut off your enemies enough. You don't keep that pressure going enough. And we kind of have two points within this one point. I'm going to do a much more in-depth review of this game scenario you see here, but it's a little later in the game. The Karthus is sequencing bottom to top. He hasn't had a lot of room on the top side. That was my duty. That's right, I ganked a Malphite top over and over again. That's why I'm going to make a video on it. But he shows mid lane after showing the psychopathic need to counter jungle me all game. I mean, that's expected. It's a Zyra jungle. So instead of doing the Grump Wolves and sequencing down, thinking, okay, well, mid lane's gone. No, go to the Scuttle Crab because I know the guy's going to go to the Scuttle Crab afterwards. I push it up to cut him off. You can then translate that to a gank on the top side because you know he's got nothing there to do, so he's going to be forced to go somewhere else. Cut him off from his intentions. 
Let's look at it from a more fluid example. We have here a Rek'Sai game versus Rengar. The Rek'Sai dies a level 3 gank in the mid lane, burns the Yone's flash, goes to the top side. We know the Rengar's going top to bottom. Reapy ganks in the mid lane immediately before the Rengar's able to do anything, gets the kill. Rengar shows up, flashes, forced to leave. That's why your tunnel network is very important on Rek'Sai. Make sure you place it after you have your ganks in situations to basically position yourself very well later on in the game. Now, in this particular case, the Rengar should not... Okay, look, the Rek'Sai showed up mid lane, basically added 12 CS to her numbers and didn't have a blue buff. That means her blue buff is still available. So I think she might go for this blue after this kill. But it's a Rek'Sai who can see what you're doing and has tremor sense. The Echo also has TP. So the Rengar goes for this and dies. This is one of those scenarios where you have to think about your Kano jungling timing. You can't just go for things in the jungle 1v1 matchup without considering lanes. And I know I always talk about my game plan shutting down the enemy jungler, letting your lanes breathe and win if they're winning, and if they're not winning, then you can gank them pretty easily. All of this through shutting down, cutting off, and denying the enemy jungler. Now in this particular case, you're going to see some replays of the Rek'Sai and the Rengar meeting quite a lot, with the Rek'Sai just preventing him from doing anything, burning flashes, burning ultimates, because guess what? When that happens, he can't use it somewhere else, like bottom lane. So if you have a winning bottom lane, well, there you go. You have to let lanes be lanes when they're winning, and when they're not winning, you have to ensure the enemy jungler can't keep snowballing them without punishment. And if you want to control the enemy jungler every single game, sometimes you have to let them have a lane just to cut them off from others, such that you equalize what they're doing, and then of course it will come down to an even field fight at some point in the mid game. But with that concept of cutting off your enemies and preventing them from doing what they want to do, we've mentioned this in the Viego example, badly executed. Then the Belveth did it so he could never leave his jungle again, exactly what she should do. Zyra cutting off the Karthus from doing his crab, Rek'Sai cutting off the Rengar from doing absolutely everything. All of that is also built into your general counter jungling timing. See, a lot of times people just go counter jungling for the sake of it. Like this Karthus against Zyra, yeah, that's what he did. He just would run into the jungle and steal shit and leave. Didn't think about why or when or what would be happening. He just thought about himself. Well, for me, that made it very predictable and I couldn't care less if he stole my blue or grump every now and then. Look at this Nocturne that we had in a silver game on the coaching channel. The guy has an opportunity to invade the enemy jungler on the blue side. He's going for it. He's taking the Raptors. He takes a Scarlet. He moves into the jungle. It's a fight versus Master Yi. Oh, wait a second. He has no lanes. And now their lanes are going to collapse and kill him. Why would you even do this? This Nocturne example and the Viego example are what cause laners to say insulting things to us junglers and make us very annoyed because they shouldn't say it because they don't understand things. But at the same time, can you see the hypocrisy of that when we're actively making stupid plays which laners cannot rotate to, causing their lanes to get fed? A good jungler, if we take this Nocturne, say a little bit later in the game, will know when to go counter jungling, snack a camp, snack a camp, get level six, and then ult gank the mid lane. Hey! That was much better. So if a Silver Nocturne can auto-correct a bad decision in-game by recognizing, look, my bad, shouldn't have gone for it. Let me do this good counter-jungling through good tracking, use my ultimate spike to have a good angle of approach for a gank. Obviously, he has an ultimate that flies, but you know. These are the sorts of scenarios that allow you to carry games without struggling. These are the sorts of scenarios that make your laners not in because when they're fed, you protect them and allow them to thrive. When they're behind, you have the angle of approach to gank them and prevent the enemy jungler from snowballing it. And if we take this final example here to show you how this can fuse together by kind of cutting them off and misleading them a little bit. So you have an Evelyn and Echo, both are going to full clear down. The Evelyn's going to go leashless to enable laners to get to their spot. We have here Raptors, Krugs, Red, Wolves, Grump, Blue in order to have the good sequencing. The Echo shows mid lane for the gank. Now instead of saying, oh look, the gank is nothing I can do about it. Take the Scuttle Crab because you know he's going to try and contest this and then go bottom lane. From here, you can shadow up and clean up the kill on the Tristana. A missed opportunity for the top Scuttle, but if you can do your second spawn Raptors, Krugs and go back to base, that's always fine as well. It's fine because it optimizes your experience to be able to get that early level 6 because we understand that that's the spike we need to cut off the enemy jungler's ability to gank the bottom lane, which, once you have an early level 6, becomes pretty easy. And that's the whole point here. If you know the enemy jungler is getting away with something and you can say, okay, look, he ganked mid lane, he's going to go for a scuttle, take the scuttle, leave the situation so you're not compromised, clean up a hold a wave if you need to, or gank a lane. You've seen that twice in this video. That's an absolutely huge concept to cut off a jungler from their next move, whatever that move might be, wherever they're coming from. These sorts of behaviors in the early game, even if you don't come out ahead or if it feels like your laners are losing a little bit, what it does is still prime you to make the right plays in the second phase of the early game as you transition to the mid game, because that's where the game is won. And if you're constantly having a really bad first six or seven minutes or a really bad seven to 12 minutes as you get into the second part of the early game, yeah, it's going to feel like your laners are always inting and there's nothing you can do about it. So the point of this video was to show you these five little things that can make the biggest difference between gaining that victory and losing.
And if you want to understand how to control the jungle, not only from this early phase, but also the second and third phase of the game, click the video in the box on your top right to be enlightened about the level of control you can have every game as a jungler on the eternal journey to jungle diff.